All right, Earth Speaker Podcast here. Actually, doing this on the stream yard for the first time here with Kyle Nash. Welcome to the 22nd century. Yeah, big Jim, James Neese. Oh my God, corn balls. What's up? That is that has got to be literally the whitest thing I've ever seen you do, Jim. And that is a statement. And, and that's, I am I'm whiter than white. And that's the thing. Jim is pretty fucking white. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't deny it. I don't know why you deny it, EJ. I'm I'm honest with I'm, who I am. I'm not I'm not white. Stop it. You're Don't, a white yeah. fan. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So fellas, uh, th th this is the uh file for content crew here. Yes. Met, met much content as much content as we filed in our group chat, ladies and gentlemen. I love the part, and I forget which jabroni it was of, that did this of the pair over me here in the stream yard of you. But somebody said, All right, filed for content. What are the topics? And I was like, I did it right out of Kiwi Peel. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I actually have stuff here to, to talk about, but like, this is stuff that we had talked about like two months ago when we first had the idea of doing this. Okay. That's I don't know if you want to touch on that. I mean, it's you know, well, I mean, the origins. Well, I mean, we can tell the folks about what what, what the origins of Five Content actually came from. I mean, that's what a good host would do. So, I, mean, I, mean, right, so I guess I better do that. So, see, file for content. <laughs> <laughs> that's a point. I, I didn't want it to be another like, okay, let's talk about sports and Colin Murray's contract. I wanted to be something no, a little no. more laid back in this. Here, kind listen, of so th 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 just just as a concept, ladies and gentlemen, because EJ likes talking politics. He thought it would be get fun to get dunked on in a different topic. And since Jim wants to make everything political, including a, a Ron Rodgers. Q-Ron. Q-A-Ron. And, um, <laughs> and, you know, because I have hair that's as good as Clay Travis's, so Jim's jealous of me as well, I thought I'd make a fantastic Oh, whoa, whoa. There was a half here. Who's talking about? That was above the belt, motherfucker. <laughs> above the belt. Yes, that's why I right, exa literally above the belt. <laughs> <laughs> above the belt through my boobs. At any rate, no, but so this is just a, a flash of stuff that the three of us have splattered all over our group chat and random thoughts. And when we get something that would be funny in a podcast that wasn't about sports, we labeled it as hashtag filed for content. That's part for, part of it. Yeah, that's definitely part of it. And I'll tell you what, the, one of the things I think I think one of the jokes for me anyway was that. Every time we will talk about, okay, you know, if we discuss something random on our, on our group text, and I think it's something that we should do on the show down the road, I'll like, you know, put a hashtag public content, like, I mean, next to it. You know, like, oh, that's a good idea. Public content. This for future reference. So, you know? And yeah. then the, I don't know how you ended up hosting this edition, but. You want to host, host it? I'll, I'll, I'll put the square, my square on the bottom this time. I would. I mean, I'm glad you mastered it that quickly. It took me how long to figure that out? I lost count. Hell, I'm pretty <laughs> sure Danny Thompson still doesn't know how to do it. Shouts beyond the buzzer. Anyways, <laughs> what, what, what wants to be on the buzzer? Is that still a thing, or going to be a thing? Or what? Danny actually is 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 doing a very good job with his radio station in um the the uh, Virginia North Carolina era there. So. uh he um is doing well with that. Uh that so the uh, beyond the buzzer uh beyond the buzzer. <laughs> beyond the buzzer. Like uh, you sound like a saying Johnny Manziel. Manziel, yes. Manziel, not Manziel, motherfucker. First of all, listen, <laughs> if, if you're gonna try to parody my parody, that's one thing. But if you're going to mimic me, it's Manziel instead of Manziel. The only thing that guy's zealous about is drinking, okay? <laughs> Damn. Damn. What? I mean, you're not wrong. Okay, so listen. I mean, you know. I don't know. Jim, we, we got to add to this uh, five of content uh, thing here. Oh, I mean, I'm liter literally eating the uh, no, metaphorical you're, popcorn. You're literally the metaphorical. You son of a bitch. You knew I was going to dunk on you, too. That's right. Yeah, let me, if you let me finish, uh, <laughs> just watching the two of you. Uh, well, I should say not, not the two of you dunk on each other, but Kyle <laughs> dunk on you. He's 7'5 and 5'8. Come on now. Well, I mean, I mean, you're Chris Dudley. I'm Shaquille O'Neal. Is that no? That's Sabonis. That's right. What's funny is you guys are much bigger than I am. Like, Jim, you said he was 6'3. You said he you said yeah. were. So Kyle's 7'5. You're 6'3. I mean, I'm 5'8. Like, I can't even like fuck with you guys, man. If I make if I make fun of you guys, you guys come kill me. Yeah, remember that, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's a dark 
turn. <laughs> this motherfucker, remember that bitch. I'm the juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, it's a juggernaut, bitch. Beat the shit out you. Yeah. No, so that's where that, that's where Fable content came from. Was actually was you know our group text. Which, by the way, I, that's one of, my, one of my first things I want to ask you guys. How many group texts do you guys have on your phones? Oh my god, too many. Um, fewer than expected, properly. But I I actively try to avoid group texts. And like you you jabronis, this is how much I love you guys. You guys are kind of the exception. I mean, yeah, sure. I spent half the day with you guys muted because you're a pain in the ass. Yeah. But, um. I'm on a number of group group chats and like there it's funny like I have one or two on each of the 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 different you know medium I use one through text with you guys um two through Facebook three I guess I could say but I the third one doesn't really count in my opinion and two which should basically count as one and one a for the company that I do that through on Twitter so that's basically the gist of it like I have like five total but two of them could be considered one because, like, both of the 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 the, the groups I work for, uh, Black and Gold Banneret and the Three Point Conversion, have a, a water cooler version where you could basically bring up anything in, in a business version. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm. I mean, I have. I'm gonna call it like a dozen, <laughs> but like, there's some of them that end up getting like subtext groups so like there's okay. one with like my work team but then like every so often like today a, a group of us were in it in at the office like i work remotely but That's a group of us awesome. went when went into the office today yeah. and uh one of one of my team members like texted us who were was there today because uh she brought her she, you were able to bring you're able to bring your dog into the office so she brought her dog so she sent us a picture of her dog like passed out because he just uh exuded all energy that the dog had today so like i don't consider that like it's a text group by itself it's a subgroup of of one so i have probably a dozen individual text groups and then there are sub text groups as well there's uh, way, too many. way too many i i guess the better question is, is actually how many text groups am i in with jim <laughs> at least three that i can think of i, I, I was gonna say you're in multiple of them i have a solo which we use all the time. Then now Jim is part of my wrestling podcast. Take three. I yeah. only solo with Jim when I'm thinking of ways to talk shit about how big a tool you. Well, I don't I, consider I, like I, a, I don't consider like a solo text I, message a group either. That's no, just, right. no that's, that's true. That's true. So I have the the, the one with so Jim's in one with me. Us three, of course. Then you have also the, the, the take three wrestling, which is really counting on for Pearl, counting on Pearl, which is mm -hmm. another fucking story. Kyle, why why am I everybody's why am I everybody's punching back? I don't get it. Wait, what did I do this time? Because you're an easy target. Like and and now fucking Matt is like oh, jumping. Oh, out. I feel like you have poked the bear with Matt. And Correct. Let, let's make something. That's part of it. Like already. Let, let, let's be clear about one thing. I might have sold him the weapon with which he beats you, but if I wasn't the proprietor, somebody else would have been. I'm just saying. Kyle, all this traces to you. You know that, right? All of this shit traces to you. Hey, hey, hey. First of all, like, <laughs> think of it as like a Batman comic where there's gangsters all over the place, but before you start, start getting to the super villains. I'm Falcone, all right? He just happens to get his wares from me. But if I weren't here, somebody else would give him what he needs to do his evil. All right? I'm going to blame somebody, though. Listen, Millie Vanilli. <laughs> that's funny <laughs> what can i say except you're, you're welcome, welcome. So, I'm you know, we meandered all down this dark corridor of 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 strange things that ej has come to to terms with here um, you're welcome <laughs> nice why don't you actually list one of the filed for content topics because to self to to be a completely uh you know, horrible host. I I'm inclined to 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 get a laugh out of what one of these topics were. <laughs> the, the, well, the topic actually uh, I have right here is actually the title of this uh, episode. The title of the episode is "Oh Hey, Cal Has a Podcast." Really? Just yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. You're back in six years. It's a big deal. 
So, I mean, I guess. Stop. Well, no, it, it, here's what's funny about it. Like, I mean, listen, this this isn't the James Lip, Lipton interviewed I, I I pictured when I'm doing it in the mirror and rehearsing for when I'm a success, okay? Drinking but, beer in the process, too. What's that? And drinking beer in the process, like Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean, it's a Red Bull, that beer. That's beer, actually, right? No, it's beer. Let's be clear about something. Um, I got no disrespect for Stone Cold. He's a fantastic entertainer and a fun guy and, 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 and a, a great role model for badassery. And without even me being a wrestling fan, been committed more party fouls mm -hmm. than EJ has committed incorrect declarations of sport in football. What? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So the 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 way this cat party fouls and wastes beer, like you're wrestling people. How do you just watch that? Like that's carnage. I mean, it is what it is, man. Like. It is what it is. We like what we like, buddy. Ray Travis has a clear and distinguished voice that cuts through and don't rings the dulcet tolls of my eardrums, even though he's saying completely stupid stuff. Oh, but it is what it is. I mean, come on. Well, I mean, back in the day, he I mean, you're 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 pouring out Miller Lights, which I mean I'm a Miller Light guy if I'm drinking light beer. So you do what you do. Yeah. Now, I mean, the man's got his own, literally his own beer. I mean, he's he's oh. You know, it's it's no different than if I'm just pouring my own water on myself. You know, it is what it, you know. God, you know that do, logic is. Do really you do that, Jim? Pour water yourself. What's that? <laughs> do you do that normally? Pour water yourself. Yeah, Wait, it's called water. a shower. Try it, EJ. Oh, oh, oh no! Woo! Wonder who? Oh, wow! Oh, wow! No. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. It does matter that it's his own beer, and I have to admit, as the non wrestling guy on the panel, I did not know that. But yeah, it's pretty big. Too. It shouldn't matter, but it it does because now it's a marketing shtick, and, and the businessman in me sympathizes, or not sympathizes, but relates. Okay, yeah. see, it all comes around. Now you you've learned something today, Kyle. Yeah, Steve Austin has his own beer. You know what else he did? Like a damn champion. Y'all watch. Um, uh, hot ones on YouTube. I no. love hot ones. What is that? What is that? So the premise of hot ones, first of all, step your fucking game up, EJ. So, oh, yeah. It's yeah, been around hot. for far too long for you to not know what it is. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. In, 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 I have no idea what that is. Um, yo, have you, have you, have, has your family ever considered dressing up like the Simpsons? I know your sons would have to go and drag and that might be awkward, but I, I, I like you, you have the perfect head for a, a Homer of a different hue. And all you got to do is acquire the appropriate wig for the significant other there. Okay. Cause here's the thing, since you're a fan of so many teams, inevitably you always are a Homer. So I don't see how that costume is a loss for you. <sighs> Jesus. Nothing. Okay. Exasperated sigh. <laughs> I mean, that is a beaten and broken man right there. I'm broken. I'm not even a SummerSlam Saturday yet. <laughs> Here's what's funny. Like, you're talking about, we were talking about my pot earlier, and, and I tried to be humble about it, but, you know, you wouldn't let me. And, uh, and uh, Jim's like, humble, right, Kaya? Anyway, <laughs> no, but. Uh, it's funny how your team fanhood is leaking into my pod, and I'm not even necessarily trying. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, everybody's become very aware of your fanhood, or rather, abundance therein. Can you're, we be you're a team whore, EJ. That's what we're trying to, I, I am trying not, to dance around it. This is what I don't get, though. I am not a team whore. Just because I got the Cowboys credit for week three and being a top five in the power rankings, which I'm ultimately wrong about by week 14, because you motherfuckers <laughs> fuck anyway. Oh, you were so wrong in week ball. three, but we're. Look, look, I'm, not, look, I'm, not, I'm not the jackass to put the beers at number fucking number 10 at week four. I'm not that guy. That was Jim. I'm sorry. Who was the guy that did have the Bengals that week, though? Oh. Me? You? Okay, so I make one mistake in 17 weeks. You made multiple mistakes for all 17 weeks. And the playoffs, Jim. And the playoffs. And I'm somehow the asshole. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I can get I Mike on the show. That's what it was. I had Mike on the AFC North. That's what yeah. It was. Oh yeah, and I, which I just actually listened to the episode today. Actually, by the way, feel the burn. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you did. No, but I always do. What's that? I always do. Unfortunately, man. You may want to get that looked at. Anyways, <laughs> what do you do, man? I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> Preparation age, my guy. It'll go a long way for you. <laughs> but no, seriously, like, what's what's an actual filed for content category other than me being great at, at podcasting? Okay, here's a document of things I had here from two months ago. Uh, Jim's whiteness was a topic. We touched on this already. Yeah, we're, we've already <laughs> we're we're already past this. Uh, group text. We did it already. Uh, EJ, you were supposed to be filing the things for content when we hashtag filed for content. Now he put himself on mute. Oh, wonderful. I mean, it's probably safer that way. <laughs> be honest. <laughs> and here's your host, EJ. I cut for a second. I'm okay. good. Hello? Sorry, like, say it again. Welcome back, EJ. Welcome back. Hold on. I think I lost you guys. Hold on a second. So, Jim, since you I can probably... Like I don't know why. Give me a second. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. No, he hears me. Again. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear us? I can hear you guys. I don't know why. Oh. So I'll, I'll sing EJ's theme song until he hears you guys. So there you go. Make fun of me. I can't hear a fucking word you guys saying. This is great. <laughs> it's not our fault your ish is broken, EJ. <laughs> he couldn't hear you say that, you know. I know. He'll hear it eventually. He'll go oh, back through hold this. On. Hold on. And he will hear us. And then, then it'll be even funnier because, like, it's we're literally we're literally shooting fish in a barrel right now. I mean, the fish at least try to move. No, but so Jim, here's the thing: is there ever a time where you've acknowledged bad officiating against? I check, don't check. Know, okay, the Trojans. Hold on. Against who? Against like against the USC? USC? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm I don't. Sure know. Have. Oh yeah, they weren't playing the Irish when it happened, though. That's what it uh, is. Well, obviously. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if we're gonna I can't hear you guys. Numbers, this sucks. You can hear me. I can't hear y'all. I don't know why. This is stupid. I don't know, EJ. Did you hit buttons? I got nothing, man. I can't help you. Well, it, it, you know, it's funny. It, it's all good. These things happen. Like during the student of the game podcast, Darrell Owens accident, bing. accidentally, bing, there you go, accidentally muted. Yeah. Himself. Hold on a second. I'm going to change some of Keep talking. I'm going to change some real quick. Yeah, we already are, DJ. The, <laughs> we had a fantastic interaction talking about the Packers Fuck and various other shit. things. And I'll say this. I'm not a Packers fan. You've seen me wear my 49ers cap regularly. If I wasn't limping around like an octogenarian right now because I, you know, fell downstairs on a beach, that's a fun way to spend your vacation or rather finish it, by the way. Oh, shit. No, really? Yeah, no, it's it's pretty awful. I was limping all over the field at Jag uh, Jaguars camp today. It was ridiculous. Did you break something or is it like a sprain? Um, it's probably a sprain. It's not a break because it's not the right kind of pain and I can still move things. I'm just incredibly oh. stiff. That's what she said. And, um, you know, that whole situation, it, it, I'm just walking funny right now. I, I've actually had that happen before. I managed to like sprain both my knees and my ankle at the same time once playing flag football. It was awesome. Not really. Oof. Um, so say all that to say, um, check, check. <clears throat> Okay, we could we we've never stopped Still here. Still can hear you guys. Yeah. So this is strange. Here's, here's here's what I like is he checks his mic, but the problem is him hearing us. I mean, I'm I'm a horrible engineer when it comes to this, but still can hear you guys. What the fuck is going on here? I got to give EJ this credit though, like him leaning into like you're wrestling people. Him leaning into being the heel is incredibly noble. And the fact that he can't hear me right now means I can lay all these compliments on him. You know what, what it is about, EJ? Who, what, what, how I fell in love with being a guest on podcasts, Jim, was being Jeez. a guest on his podcast regularly. I didn't have to do a lot of work. He would just come in, and we would talk football, and it would be... Is there any reason why this would do this, Jim? Like, well, I, I can't, obviously I can't hear you talk, but... Yes, well... For some reason, I can hear my, my monitor fine and everything else, but I can't hear... You guys, so this space out of here. I don't I, understand that. I will ask him if he is 
looking at the private chat in StreamYard, apparently this became a StreamYard clinic. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it goes back to computer issues. I feel like that's the... Yes, right, the van. Um, like, I'm we're not running the studio, so we can't really see anything. So I, I'm not sure what to tell them either. I'm just, yeah. I, I got nothing. So it's, it's, you know, I have to say, Jim, EJ's concentration face, pretty cool. He looks like he's about ready to get some work done here. I like this. It's serious. Like he's, it's, he's it's something is about to levitate on my desk. Deep in thought. I swear, like if, if my... If my uh, LED lights over here start going, like, turning off, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, he went to the phone. Let's see. Let's go to the phones. No. Um, has he simp Has he tried to let himself in and back out of the, the, the chat yet? Yeah, I'm going to have him try Speaker? that. Yeah. Spreaker. Spreaker? You jabronis still use Spreaker? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I have no clue. I would only I would only judge you if you still use Blog Talk Radio. Like, oh God, dude, I've been I've been beyond that world for shit. I don't even know the number of years that I've been off of, off of that narcotic. Like narcotic. Right. Good. Good. Your face is a narcotic. Oh, hi, EJ. I'm better. I'm better. Thank, thank you, guys. Uh, what? I don't get that. Like it literally just cut out, and like everything worked but me hearing you guys. You heard you heard, you heard what I was talking about, right? You heard, heard me talking, right? Yeah, we You're heard you the whole time. We never stopped hearing you. Yes, <laughs> it's not like a bad thing there, bud. Sort of. Well, I mean, the bad part is you can't, you couldn't hear us. We were having yeah. a great conversation, but you kept talking you know, shit. I'm, sorry, I'm gonna go back and fucking listen to the archives of this fucking podcast and say, hey, "This is Kyle go off me." No idea what he's in for. I know. No, I, can't. That's part. I told you that's the best part of the whole thing. <laughs> we like to leave these little carrots on, on the different like three cow recordings. And we like we tell people like, if you hear this, text us. If you hear this, tweet at us. It's one of our favorite things to do. So like we can make fun of we, we can make fun of people and we'll see if they ever even hear it. That's the best part. Oh boy. I see you're setting the table for me to talk trash on somebody. I'm not in the mood to right now. And I'll leave it there. <laughs> oh, cool. can can we do that? Is that apropos to go nah, let me not do that. At least not on the first episode. That's that doesn't seem fair. <laughs> anyway, no, but but like so what what's the next topic you got, EJ? Since Jim and so, I what, what, well, so when did you, when when did I cut off here? I cut off when I, I said something about uh uh Jim's whiteness. Yeah, we touched on that. Yeah. Like barely. You damn racist! What's there, what's there to touch on? I'm wh I'm whiter than white. What? <laughs> what else I have? If I was I a said. super. If I was a superhero, I would just be super white. Like what? Oh yeah, I had I had I had a a, a a section on on why Jim and I can't see to quit each other on each other's podcast. Now Actually, we're on a podcast together. I know together. exactly how to do this. We what, what is that? Go ahead. It's whiteness in the style of that of that segment from the 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 in living color show uh -huh. dirty Dozens. uh-huh your host is so white so white <laughs> your host is so white i could stare at the sun for three hours and still not be bright enough <laughs> <laughs> um oh i got well, another, another one another one i had also too was uh now this of course is two months ago was my passion for the nhl and the fact that jim likes to show my passion for the nhl my new, well, my new, I mean, my new, renewed look, passion of NHL. It, my, my mm -hmm. shitting on it had nothing to do with it being you specifically. I take umbrage to people, and and it's not, and it's not. I mean, I it's it's more of a guard on hockey because it's my favorite sport. But like, I I I I do not. I I am not a fan of people who just latch on come playoff time. Oh boy! And are you listening to the wrong host? <laughs> <laughs> like that, you know what I mean? That 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 is that is you know I I made fun of you. Um, again, we go back to earlier portions of this show and every li literally every other one we do with you. <laughs> Easy target, <laughs> Easy but like target. 
you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know if like I had, and, and again, I, I, I can't remember every single tweet that I've ever read, but I don't remember. I can tell tell what it is. Clay Travis sucks. Dallas Cowboys, fuck you. Hockey, yeah, (laughs) Capitals. I mean, mean, tell me the last time. First off, tell me the last time you see me tweet about Clay Travis. It's been a while. Um, I I delete him. I delete motherfucker. I I fucking unfollowed him after a while. I just couldn't. But I don't. I don't recall a time where I where I heard you talking about hockey. Which is which is why like all of a sudden the Rangers like figured out you know icing versus like icing on a cake and and you like latched on like it was like some some you've always been a Rangers fan and I'm like this mother is this motherfucker serious like is he is he being like no I'm gonna I'm gonna call BS on this um oh, and then not- I just then then it just became fun again like most times we beat you with a stick it's it's just fun yeah it's the whole reason i know he's a jets fan is like he never talked i am not a jets fan stop no you you stop that voodoo buddy stop that voodoo <laughs> there's on, a, it's like the one team he's not a fan of. no there's there's two one of them's the niners that's true mm-hmm. that's true that's very true i would never claim the niners that's sorry okay. kyle sorry I'm kyle i'm watching trey lance you through the heart Anyway, it's got a great story for you, folks. Um, no, oh, really? speaking of which, Trey, Trey Lance starting quarterback officially. Um, how do you feel about that? Um, well, so much for not being a sports podcast, but no, I, I mean, we can we can just dive. You know, we can you know chill like, it a little bit. Here's what I kind of expected from you, EJ, where you're kind of like you and I don't typically talk politics because I try to dodge that ish like a bullet. Like bullshit. There are pl- no, I really do. Uh, Name the last political stand I've made. We we never go into actual politics, but we have kind of flirted around the topic, like I'll like take like an example. But like, remember remember, remember that podcast two years ago with about, talking about Drew Brees? Two years ago, a year ago, two years ago, he brings up. <laughs> but I talk about politics all the time. Bitch. I didn't say that. I, I didn't say that. I said something. I said we not. Well, no. Not, like, what was the backdrop for it? Had to do with his comments on Black Lives Matter and kneeling and shit. Or no, see, first of all, this is how I know you watch too much ESPN. That is not what happened. Okay, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's something. Yeah, to, Black, something Black, to Black, Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter was not a factor there. No, I mean it was the kneeling thing. No, it, it was, which kind of just goes around all that, you know. Like if you if you looked at the context, mm-hmm. it was him just wanting to pay tribute to his grandfather being in the military. Right. No. Next thing you know, Shannon Sharp's coming out talking so much ish. He might as well be behind the grass. No, 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 no. I'm not saying talking about him and Drew and Drew's. I'm talking about like you and I engaging in the, in the discussion. Oh about yeah, that's, that's, that's all. That's all I'm saying. And I forget what it was you said. And I'm like, all right, hold up, stop. And and we, we did an emergency podcast. Yeah. Talked about <laughs> it and and you were like, you know what? I did up. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like. <laughs> Isn't Jim ridiculous and racist? And you were like, "Yeah," <laughs> <laughs> and we all we carried on our lives after that. After that. <laughs> and see, like I can nitpick little things because here's the thing. Here's the thing that's tough about being a data guy. There are so many political takes that are out there mm-hmm. that are popular AF, and I hate playing this card, but I'm going to on both sides as a data person that I just recognize because I'm a data person. Uh, you know, I, I I make money. You said that like five times last yeah. minute. That was the joke. This is, this is collecting data, what you're doing right now. By the way, if you want the best example of portrayal of data in movies, Moneyball. That's right. I said it. Yeah. Um, great, movie, great movie, by the way. Son of theaters. But, um, yeah, it, 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 there's, there's plenty of t- takes that are just horrible out there. Period. But if you point them out, suddenly you're playing for the other side. So... That is, in a nutshell, why I don't engage in politics. I'm too damn smart for my own good sometimes, he said modestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jim's a, Jim's a libtard. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I think Jim might be the most liberal person in this panel. Oh, it's not close. It's not close. Yeah, and but you, you would all, I think you would also probably be amazed that uh, I'm not as liberal as people probably think. I'm. Oh, I know where you well, are. Politically. Even right the past, you and I. You come out with your Quayrons and all this and F. Clay Travis, but we're the wrong ones wrong for 
thinking you're more liberal. I'm just saying. You think I'm more liberal? Than oh, I didn't you? say anybody was wrong, but I, I mean, my 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 point is, uh, if if you actually if you if you knew me and I and engaged in like more broad discussions, you would learn that I am probably I am probably not even what most people would probably consider liberal. Okay, well, 30 minutes in, let's go ahead and get to something that's filed for content. What is your most surprising take? About what? Politically. Like for myself or, or towards anybody else? What, well, no, what I mean, like, Jim makes the point, well, I'm probably not as liberal as you think. What is, what is... That's, that's how he sounded, too, by the way. He sounded very, very sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping in that very same ilk, what makes what what's something that you would say that would make uh, a a liberal clutch their pearls in disappointment at you? A I'm liberal. Pro, I'm pro Second Amendment. I'm w, yeah, what? that's me too. Yeah. I'm pro two way, buddy. I'm pro free speech. Yeah, you know what? I don't. I hate racists, but wait a minute. Have, you, Podcasters are pro free speech. The fuck? What, what, I, what I'm saying is that I'm pro. I I I, I hate racists to the ends of the earth. But you're allowed to be, but let the consequences. Right. right okay. In. Well, let me let me let me pause you there for a second because a lot of times on your earnestly speaking show, when you're talking about free speech and right to free speech and things like that, you're not even using it contextually correct. Oh snap, here he comes. What, what, what do you mean? Because the only the only the only time free speech is truly threatened is if you're being censored by the government. I knew you were gonna do this, and you're not wrong either. Oh, the, so many times when people use free speech, uh, my, when, free, my, my free speech is being infringed on. They're they're wrong. Anytime, anytime your a, a tweet gets taken down, anytime uh, your Facebook account gets suspended, anytime your employer tells you what you know, um, you know, disciplines you for something you post, all of the none of those things are your are 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 an infringement on your right to free speech. The only time your your free speech is infringed on is when the government censors you. Literally, that's it. That that that's what free speech means. See, and and as you do so correctly this time, like it's up there with people who use the word literally literally the wrong way all the time. Right. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, uh, it's the Ted Mosby uh, discussion. That there oh, was, there Ted was, Mosby! Like there was, like there was a uh, there. Ted Mosby uses literally when he means figuratively or or something like that. What there were there was an episode of How I Met Your Mother where they where they had these revelations about each other, and one of them was <laughs> literally figuratively. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it's it's too the the the, the free speech thing dry dry. I mean that that drives me nuts because mo, ninety well. I'm almost willing to bet it's pretty. I mean, I know you're 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 a numbers guy, Kyle, but I, I'd probably be pretty close. No, no, to no. It. He's a data guy. He said that six times in this podcast already. <laughs> isn't isn't one portion? Kyle, of everybody. Like, <laughs> he's correct. Yeah, like out to to EJ's credit, you know, it's ridiculous, but he's right. There's more context. It was bound, it was bound to happen eventually. No. Um, but but yeah, m most of the time when when people are talking about free speech, they're not even using it correctly. Nope. What I find just as infuriating are people who claim that numbers don't lie. I'm like, bitch, please. But continue. Did you see the dumb shit that Lauren Bobert said today? I don't know who she is. I mean, is, is, is there really crazy? I mean, like, yes, nutty, I, like Colorado. If you're referring to the tweet you you retweeted about, yes, I saw it because you retweeted it. But starting a sentence sentence with, did you see the dumb thing that Laura Bobert said today? You're gonna have to explain. Uh, the context behind it, because that bitch be spewing dumb shit all the time. She I said, mean, you have she said, screen function here, uh, EJ. Why don't you utilize it? Whoa, oh, I could. Oh, that's right. I could do that, but I have to upload oh, it first. Man, right? you're, you're going to break his ish again, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong, though. <laughs> I want to see the security van overturned during the podcast so his camera's upside. No, but she, she, she basically said that, you know, quote, the church is supposed to get supposed to direct government. Yeah, she's and then, an idiot. Like, she's... You know, so, she, she goes, I hate that they say separation of church and state is in the Constitution, even though the Constitution says that it's separation of church and state, and, you know, this is the party of freedom, apparently. I don't know. 
Just saying. I want to see what these fuckers start to do. It, it, like the, the 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 prayer in school or a prayer in athletic school athletics thing. I want to mm-hmm. see. I want to see these fuckers' heads explode if somebody tries to lead like a Muslim prayer on a football field in Texas. Like, because that, like, that's the thing. Like, if, if you want to have, if you want to, if you want to have religion, because they're like, what they when they say religion, they don't mean religion. They mean Christianity. They mean their religion, right? Like when we're and 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 like and here's the deal. Like, like I'm a Christian. I, I th- this isn't. Oh no no no! I'm a Christian. See see what I labeled there, Ernest so you're, EJ you're Christian. Literally, you're literally a Christian. Yes, and that yeah. that is the proper <laughs> use of literally. Wait, yeah. so is Kyle though. So is Kyle. Middle name Christian, but a K though. Wait, That's seriously? Yes. Yeah, yes. Oh, you know that? Oh Jesus! Uh, did not you're, know. Did not you're, know that. You're 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 well. All Christians here. All three of us. Listen to me. Um, <laughs> but but that that's that's what these that's what these people mean. They, they don't they don't. Yeah. When when they say they want religion in school, they mean they want. Christianity in school. school you know and like that like therein lies the problem because you know I, I've always said like when when they're then when they're arguing to have governed by by biblical rights I'm like man let's l- let's try to apply any other religion let's let's take one of the ones that like a lot of the people on the far right uh would would hate like Muslim, for example, Let, let's let's try to apply Muslim logic to to a governing law in this country, and then let's hear them go. We can't do that here. Well, why not? You want religion to rule, right? Well, listen. I mean, first of all, I don't think anybody here is preaching theocracy. So let's 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 not go oh, too sure far enough. down the street, right? You know, but I think I think even biblical rule, we don't have to. Though your point is well made, Jim. We don't have to go down the road to even go there, like. You're supposed to be. You're supposed to stone somebody if you bear false witness or something like that within Christianity, right? Allegedly, and if we did that, uh, we. I don't want that system. I love right. EJ Christian too much. I don't want to see him stoned for all the time, <laughs> of which he's not actually a fan. You are so mean, dude. I want to say I want to keep you alive. <laughs> Yeah, come on. He's just he's literally saving your life. Literally saving your life, EJ. Accurate. No, he's he's no, you're right. You're right. No, that, but that dumb shit, man. I mean, come on. Look, I'm not, you know me. I'm I'm a I'm a center you're gonna find. I'm 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 a common sense guy. You know, I, I, I've said in the past, I I used to be Republican. I will vote Republican if it makes sense, obviously. You know, but I the dumb shit I'm seeing, and I, even for the Democrats too, like this is this is I think with between me and everybody else that I'm willing to call both sides, and, I, and I've been doing that for fucking all, all week long. I just gave Democrats shit yesterday on Facebook for, you know, doing the same thing the White House did last weekend, talking about how like gas is now three ninety nine in most parts of the country now, and that it's going down. Like, like it's a, it's yeah, it's a good thing it's going down, but three ninety nine is still not good. Uh, I'm it's glad. Not good. Can, you, can we also stop pretending like we're ever going to get back to one thirty nine per gallon? No, right. But, but my point was though is that I just feel like. Why do you have to even say it? Why why pander? And so I so the Democratic Party posted that on on was that two days ago. I, I should send you this text. I sent them a, a a thing saying that basically they have like the worst like you know self self like uh you know awareness. Literally five minutes later, they send me a text on Facebook Messenger. Literally or figuratively? No, I think no 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 literally. No, they I'm literally sent the message, but what is it? Was it literally five minutes? Look, I'm just I'm just no, no, maybe, maybe short maybe it's shorter. I'm 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 literally just hammering the point home that Kyle's mentioned earlier. He, he goes, he goes, he goes. Ernest, thanks for commenting. You want up up for a few questions about about, about the, the party. I go, don't bother. I go, they, they go, understood. Maybe later. I go, never. This morning, th- this is yesterday. This morning, ten thirty morning. They go, Ernest, might now be a good time to chat. So here, look at this. Right. Put it in front of the camera, numb nuts. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I believe you. I mean, it, it's look. Like Bo- both name, sides, man. both yeah, both sides do it. They, it's 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 exhausting, but you know, it is what it. You know, again, I I, I said like we're not we're never going to stop it because it's that that's what the machine's going to do. What the machine's going to do. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. Um, it's all, it's all fun and games until you get the next version of the proverbial Southwest. Yes, proverbial Jim. Um, because 
the reason why I say the Southwest is the way it disrupted the airline industry in a complete different state of being. Mm. For better and worse, of course. But somebody, I think it was you, Jim, that said, we're never going to get back to $1.39 a gallon. Oh, we may, but it's going to be way of by way of finding alternative stuff because, sure. you know, the gouging that's taking place is not getting regulated now. So now granted, I know that's allegedly a Republican thing and yet that's not who the president is. And I know that the Senate's a problem, but allegedly the Dems have a strong, not strong enough, perhaps representation in the, uh, in the, uh, house. And granted, I'm talking a lot out my butt when it comes to government, I don't pay enough attention because it gets depressing real fast because at the federal level, I vote, I do research when it's time for me to vote and do all that. That's great. There's not enough people that appreciate what goes on in their local politics Bingo. for me to really care about the national scene because the people who are getting, getting to the national scene aren't qualified enough in the first damn place, which, you know, is really the, the source of the entire problem with so many movements that are, well, I'm going to just call it trendy. Like wokeonomics is a thing because people are too dumb to understand they're being marketed to rather than uh, called to arms. I agree. No, that no, makes sense. Listen, if y'all go quiet when I say some prophetic shit, like this is going to be a really long podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, now's my chance. No, I, you calm joke. the masses, man. He calm the masses. Like, like, like you, you joke, man. But like, I, I think uh, like filed for content for me is like, now you have that chance. Like when, when I'm, when I'm at work or, or, or working, you know, from home or whatever, that people want to approach a topic that the real answer is something somewhat corporately inappropriate. And I refer to it as a frosty adult beverage conversation. Inevitably, inevitably, inevitably at some point, theoretically, you meet up with your people at work for a happy hour. Someone's like, we got to get this bonding time in. And, you know, then we go ahead and do it. Now, granted, it's harder and harder with people being located out all over the country and certain things like that. It's not as practical as it used to be. By the way, whoever came up with the idea of virtual happy hours can kiss my entire ass. Unless you are posted, postmates me, or unless you're going to postmates me some damn beer, I want to hear about virtual happy hours that's some bullshit okay but <laughs> um is this the whole thing what the virtual happy hour i i heard of it being a thing for a little while but that's the whole thing i mean now. it was it was a it was a thing in the in the heat oh, of the that, pandemic well, right i mean but we're not but, still doing that now, are we? home is more popular ej you know that's more of a thing yeah like you're surprised the numbers surrounding people who just want don't want to go back to a damn office right are, Staggering, buddy. Like, oh, I know. It up. There's Jim, a... you're still, Jim, you're still home, right? Yeah, I mean, like I said, a group of us went into the office today, but I mean, my my primary work is remote. So when you go to the office, like it's like once a blue moon, right? No, we, we we try to go in as a team once a month, but, but oh, okay. yeah, we're we are remote. Our my 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 company is like we hire remotely now for the job that I do. Like obviously the you know in, in in all lines of work there's there's certain things that cannot be done remotely, but the jobs that can be done remotely we are a remote company. That makes sense. Like, I would love work from home. It, it's very intriguing the idea of working from home. It really is intriguing. I believe you would murder yourself working from home, EJ. I'll tell you, you like what. because of me or just because uh... no, you'd, you'd hate it. Why you would hate it. You being trapped in the house all the damn time, not having another soul to interact with. Listen, you make that face. Oh, I'm an introvert, bitch. Please. I know you like being out there on the tables, interacting with people. I do. Okay. When that's gone. And trust me, as somebody who's dealing with it in ways I never thought I would have to, who's become very aware of mental illness and aware that in a way that I never thought I would, you would miss that shit. It would, it would be, it would be cool for the first, let's say few months and boy, you're like, damn, when can I get back on the tables? It dude, it, I'm telling you, it, it is a strange adjustment. You know, I, I worked I worked in a warehouse for 16 years. Um, and 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 working where your your interactions with people are are through a screen, 
is an adjustment. I mean, I I enjoy it. I I I actually enjoy working from home more than I thought I was going to. Um, so this isn't this isn't a um, you know, I I don't like doing it, but I do it because I that's my job. I I actually thoroughly enjoy it. But it, it, there is definitely an adjustment period to when you you go from being in in an environment where there's literal water coolers and literal break rooms and you know literal meetups in 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 the office or wherever you are to you're 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 in an office in the room of your house and you're right. you're, you're talking to people through a screen. It, it is an adjustment, and it, there, there was there was a point. Like when I when I came out of like training period where it was just doing the job that that it it was it was weird and and the, like it was like man this is this is tougher than I than I thought but now that I've settled in and and it is what life is I I thoroughly enjoy it but it is definitely an adjustment period and and yeah I mean I I don't I don't you know, I, I can't say for certain that you would, that you would hate it, but it also depends on if you have the ability to, um, like, you know, the, the, the people that I work with, we have a Microsoft teams call that we have a video open all day. And there's a group of us that then hang out together in that video all day while we work. So it's like, you have a office environment within your house. So, so you but, still but, have that anchor. I don't know that that counts. It's not the same, Jim. No offense. No, but I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know what every, you know, every remote job is, is different. So, every so I don't has a different culture. Sure. You know, so, so like between doing that job, between doing your job, Jim, and then like podcasting, you know, on video with between, you know, three count and huddle up now, come back, you know, in the fall and take three down all that. You don't get tired of being in front of a screen for a while. <laughs> you know, and like you would, you would think that I would, but, um, so you just me feel like the weirdo here like i have to get the fuck out this studio for 30 seconds because the part you guys don't see like here let me let me let you peek behind the curtain real quick like oh, oh, we oh get a, shit we're oh, getting, we're, we're, we're porn we're getting a real look that is the other side of my table and all its shaky glory because i'm holding <laughs> it with my hand that's my work desk granted a little less messy messy typically but you know my wife air quotes cleaned up in here a little bit <laughs> And um, so things aren't in their normal state, but okay. um, so like that's how I, close I am to my office. I, I, so you know, I, I feel closer to you now. Good. You should. I mean, I my office is 10 feet that way where I work. Is, so, you, so you work actually in the, in the studio, too, also? Uh, Jim? Well, it, look, so the, the studio is in my basement. My my office setup is also in my basement. Like like we we have a we have a, a small house. What's a basement? It, <laughs> oh, that's right. You guys live in Florida. No, no, it's, I know what it is. I, I I'm it's more a living York, space that's below right, ground. Right, uh, first ground's right. Made of sand. <laughs> is like a reverse attic? Is that what? <laughs> yes, yes. An attic that's below ground. Yes, that, that, that's that's the best way you can describe it. No, no. Um, I'm born in New York, so I know what patient is. Obviously, it's, it's a place where people from the north can go if there's like a tornado, instead of just like boarding up our windows and hoping God doesn't kill us. Wait. You know, don't you mean like winter is coming? Oh, <laughs> I'm one of those. Oh. Um, but yeah, like my so my my office where I work is not. I, I'm not sitting in front of sports and wrestling flags all day, but but it's in the same general space. See, but I know some corporate spaces that would respect the bejesus out of that. Like, oh, I mean, I do have football jerseys hanging up in the background of my work video as well. Like, I, I can't I can't totally um, break myself of myself. And all its literally annoying glory. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is two Notre Dame jerseys and a Cowboys Super Bowl champions flag. So, yeah, with with all the years they've won it. So, yeah, oh, it is so antiques. Absolutely, <laughs> They're, it's preserved behind glass. Is what it is. Hey, come on, EJ. You know you like that dunk. Oh wait, you're no, no I know I did like it. I, I loved it. <laughs> He's what like, else? oh shit, I need to laugh because I got to pretend I'm not a Cowboys fan. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Burn, Kyle. You got him. <laughs> son of a <laughs> take that racist Dick. man that's racist uh jim don't do that <laughs> i love how jim's leaning into his whiteness because all you've done by doing that is make it ke like keen to like call i you mean how racist i mean how wider do you get by fucking me an ordain fan i mean that's just why'd you go 
Wait, what? Are you using the Bomani Jones defense here? What is this shit? Is that, is that what he said to you also, Bomani? Not yet, but I assumed you were doing it just like he did with Duke. Yeah. Jeez. You got you have to admit that. I know you probably didn't enjoy that that skit though. That's pretty funny. Oh, actually. have you seen our head coach? I mean, you know. <laughs> paying pay enough money. I mean I mean, I'm just saying. I, I get it. And, and, I mean, I know Ty Willingham was, was was black too. I get it. I get it. Look, I, I have I often it. said that the that the Ty Willingham hire and and you know what it, at, at the time to to be able to say first black head coach in Notre Dame history uh, sounded great, but to me that was a PR move after the George O'Leary debacle. Hey, listen for clarity. First of all, I deal with a school that has George O'Leary, George O'Leary as a statue. Take that for irony, bitch. Second, yeah. <laughs> um, second. Um, can we not completely disparage Ty Willingham? We got to remember he came out the gate. No, 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 or something, right? Or no, he, he, and you know, he had Stanford in what back to back Rose Bowls before Notre Dame hired him. But again, N- Notre Dame, and, and I've always, I have always kind of chuckled at the notion that Notre Dame got the egg on their face when they were the ones that actually determined that George O'Leary had lied on his resume. But that's a whole separate issue in and of itself. But Notre Dame hires a guy, and multiple days later, they're like, okay, we're firing this guy because he lied on his resume. Right. Um, then I think what they did is they found a a hot candidate that you know was a a good PR save. It 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 directed the attention away from we hired a liar to we hired our first black head coach. And he had two good seasons there, and then it, it just wasn't sustainable for multiple reasons that are well beyond my pay grade. And frankly, well beyond things that Willingham could have done in my opinion. Yeah. You know, it, it, sim- you know, similar boat happened, you know, in terms of results on the football field when, when Charlie Weiss took over is, is there was a, there was a quick and immediate culture change. Uh, players responded to it. And then, you know, for, for numerous factors, um, you know, it, it it didn't work out. It took Brian Kelly uh, into his what seventh year before there was like actual notable sustained growth at Notre yeah. Dame. So it, it's again it, it, not to go down the football uh, rabbit well, hole, but uh, football's okay. Notre Dame rabbit hole, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> like, any any time, any time that you are tasked with um, restoring a, a nationally prominent football program um you know there has to be a learning curve and you have to figure out where you were where you want to go and you have to give it time to get there we're we're looking at everybody that said jim harbaugh should have been fired from michigan three four five years ago um you know that 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 uh has has come around big time in the in the last year or so as well so i mean you say that with harbaugh shit like when have the notre dame fans ever admitted to being this wrong about brian kelly yeah dude N- notre dame fan, i mean i love notre dame but uh but i i there's so many times where i hate notre dame fans um you telling me just you know it, <laughs> hey i'm not the one that took rudy in the sports draft um but oh! dude that was not <laughs> okay fine guilty <laughs> charge <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know and, and, and people believe this shit too people i know believe it's I did this. I can't believe part. It. That's part of <laughs> in the first round yeah so <laughs> and then you think to yourself these people have a vote and then you feel depressed you know I, right and it, that's why we're back on politics. the worst part is that i made the other three episodes of, of that we recorded tonight except for the one that was most important to fucking i you know, know. Yeah, there you know that's your, that's your punishment <laughs> apparently i play my kids man oh my kid <laughs> that was sick that night man you know what i mean but hey, it is what it is um i guess we can still football a little bit here real quick um how exciting well, i, I, I want to no, no, go ahead. back like because because we you know we, we had we had brought up about like what what was the thing that what was one thing that would make oh make yes liberal look uh, yes i am i am pro second amendment but i am also not against amending certain aspects you know like certain like uh like assault weapons bans or stuff oh like yeah that. yeah common like sense. Uh, there's there's a um, pro second amendment with common sense oh, applied kyle kyle what, what are we gonna say stop with the goddamn common sense statement all right why there is that? Much to, just fucking stop that because why, no why? one can define that 
well, okay, I, I, I it, it was a loosely applied term, but what I mean is I'm not so many times, and and this is where I mean where I'm I'm probably not as liberal as where people think or or what have you. Like, yes, I am pro Second Amendment, but that also doesn't mean that I'm like standing on a tank in my front yard with two fucking ARs going, God bless America. Although I can I can picture you doing that though, honestly. You know, <laughs> as well, white as you are, I can picture you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> look, okay, look. I, it was funny. As I was talking to I was talking to a couple of my teammates as we were leaving work today because uh, um I, I forget how how the conversation started, but I'm like, you know, I I'm I'm a six foot three, three hundred and fifty plus pound bald white man that drives a Ford pickup truck. Um like there's there's times where I like sometimes want to like put a sticker on the back of my truck that says like I'm not what you think I am. <laughs> because like you know no, and it's also no, another no, reason why I wear a hat. I'm sorry, the... Jim. Jim, I'm sorry. If I saw if I didn't know who you are and I saw you on the street, I would say that's MAGA. That's a MAGA guy. Right. Dude, <laughs> what place is CJ? Why do you think <laughs> Why do you think most times you see me, I have a hat on? Yeah, I know. People don't need to know that I'm that I'm also bald with this facade. You know, like the, like <laughs> I don't I don't want. Oh, I, re I remember I remember because we we I, we were talking about things that can get misconstrued just just by by seeing the surface. And there was a there was a couple years ago the NHL released shirts, and for for every um for every market, it was defend the blank so for the blues i think it was defend the midway or defend the, the gateway or something like that for the washington capitals their shirt was defend the capital i can't wear that shirt anymore <laughs> uh oh yes right you know what yeah. i mean because it's a blue shirt with red writing that says defend the capital nope That's that yeah. shirt is dead <laughs> i'm gonna say this i'm gonna say this because it has both colors, just to be that guy, I would wear the shit out of that just to to see what the hell you I know, would. But again, six three, and I get it, you're at seven five, but there you go. Bald, <laughs> see? Bald, whiter, bald, whiter than rice, Ford pickup truck. Um, uh, you know, oh, you're jazz and rice, buddy. It 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 <laughs> I'm not wearing that shirt. <laughs> you're staying. <laughs> that's a biden voter right there i can't believe that <laughs> but anyway back to football whatever that no no no. so it was a hot take the hot take uh from from me real quick um ooh, because everything jim said i agree with like i'm the same thing i'm pro two-way i'm pro uh, free, free speech um i don't know politics wise i mean yeah that's that's pretty much it for me i think yeah so yeah, here's the thing. <laughs> the thing. Um people people have accused people have accused me of being on the opposite side merely for disagreeing with them. So it's really hard for me to put this in place. Okay. I tell people, "Hey, listen. It's cool. Just don't touch my money, you know, like corporations need to or or companies, I should say, need to, you know, make money cuz I like having a job, you know, and if they don't give me one or aren't inspired to do so, that's a bad thing. Oh, well, look at you. You repub. Did you vote for Trump? No, you're racist. You said that because I was white, but I digress. Okay. By the way, the irony that I've been called a Trump voter while while um, on the radio with the Captain Company Morning Show on OldSchool101.com. Ding! <laughs> I've helped two black female local judges get elected. I'm a member, or at least last I checked, the pandemic kind of screwed up stuff for meetings and all. Wait, wait, that. hold on, hold on, wait, Kyle, you've been accused of being a Trump voter? Yes. Have they met your wife yet? Apparently not, EJ. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, Between you, your wife and my wife, whole. I mean, you'll only you get as blue as that. Trust me. I mean, there's probably a joke, but it would probably not have anything to do with your life. But I digress. <laughs> oh, anyway, oh wait, never mind. I mean, to go <laughs> I mean to say, you know, never mind. I mean, I, you meant the Democrat. I know. I, I was. Like, well, that, well, well, my wife's not a Democrat, but she's very, very liberal. Very liberal. Very liberal. Um. 
what people can't know that you score a lot anyways no um yes in, intensely like and it's funny it's funny on a dime by the way like not to get too much into it she went from being not really caring about it and then when trump got elected brrr, here she goes she's all in i'm like okay you don't like that guy i get it um but on the other side i'll be you know i'll say something about you know i'll talk i remember very distinctly um interesting enough over a game of spades it was another white dude so there's something else that's it's weird going on there but i digress mm -hmm. Yeah, right, exactly. They process that, Jim. And I mentioned Freddie Mercury. Wasn't he gay? Who cares? He's the best front man of all time. He's well, I, I don't know, man. A, yeah, he was Iranian, too. Shut up, bitch. You know, like, I mean, so, like, do whatever you want. Just don't hurt anybody else and leave my money the hell alone. I'm hey. the same way, brother. So. Same way. But let's see. If you're centrist, that means you 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 uh, don't lean in a direction. You are just dissident with what you're being told to to, to do, basically, right? You know, more Speaking, or less, yeah, more or less. Let me put let me put let me put something out there, and I don't know that I've had a chance to pitch you guys on this yet, but like okay. it, with all that was going on with with BLM and and regardless of how anybody feels about that, <laughs> um. And any of that, I think the perfect time to reboot a particular show because that's the damn cool thing to do, right? The perfect time to reboot a particular show was during all of that. They should have rebooted Cagney and Lacey when all that was going on. Interesting. Hear me out. Okay. Cagney and Lacey don't have to be two Karens anymore. Their chief does because you need that dynamic to speak to the politics of certain things in the show. Whether the cap, their captain is a he or she in the show, I'll leave that to them. You can make this a whole, you know, movement if you'd like. One of them could be black. One of them could be Hispanic, or you could have some sort of mixing of the, the pot therein. But the fact that they're both cops and female Give the opportunity to cover a lot of things all at the same time. I'm not here to say it's as big a missed opportunity as the Red Tails for the Commanders, but it's up there, you know. And by the way, like, the what is the exact opposite of a racial slur, right? Something that pays tribute to a minority group, right? And we could have gone from red skin to red tail. But they had to fuck up the rotation. But Buzz Washington is Dan Snyder. Come on now. Yeah, well. Who probably won't be owner much longer. That's okay. Don't worry. Coming up soon, I'll be talking about that with Karita Parks on my NFC East preview. Bing! I'm just going to have to do my best to not call them the Commodore. I think I call, I've called them the Commodores multiple times. Lionel Richie, baby. Oldies musical group, by the way. I mean... Lionel Richie is the front man of that group for the record. Jim, in case you didn't know that. Why do you, why do you, okay, look, just because I'm whiter than white doesn't mean that I don't know music, okay? No, I, I, no, I, I said in case you didn't know that. Is it me? Or I mean, you, I mean, you it sounded like you assumed that I didn't know. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. How is this becoming you sing song? My, my point is, you just shouldn't assume those things just because I'm white, DJ. Oh, no, white people don't, wait, wait, that's white people racist. Don't, white, white people don't know the music too. Come on now. I'm just saying it's a that's brick crazy. house. <laughs> oh, that's a commerce too, also. In case you didn't know. <laughs> You're reminding me. racist, DJ. I'm racist. I'll tell you no, no, I'll tell you what this is a this is a joke I've had for years. Because you know I'm not racist, definitely. But if there's one thing I probably was racist about growing up was comedy. I always seem to I always growing up seem to prefer black comedy over anything else now that's different now i, I i'm a lot more broader now than i you know well i mean that. is that a but matter of exposure or preference i think it's exposure honestly i was gonna say i mean in, in in most cases especially when you're when you're your kids i mean aren't aren't you exposed like to i mean you're exposed to whatever 
people around you are listening to. But for a long time, I but for a long time, I I wouldn't even get black black stand up comedians a chance. Hmm. And then I said. Then I then I discovered you know Sam Kinison and obviously George Carlin and you know Jim Carrey's early work too you know so By the way can we take a side note anybody sure. who doesn't include Robin Williams and George Carlin on their goats for stand up comedy artists is wrong like they should just <clears throat> immediately and be thrown down like a trash shoot. By the way, that George Carlin documentary on HBO, go watch it. Yeah, haven't seen it. Amazing. I'm gonna have to go Captain America. I'll put it on the list. You know, yeah, I, there's there's <clears throat> so many things that that are on my list of stuff dude, to watch. Dude, it's so bad now to stream that I actually made a list on my on my notepad um last week of a checklist of things I I need to watch like priorities. I and always I, I always try to like get through shit during the the football off season. Yeah, that's that's my time too, and it just never happens. Well, because like a true hockey fan, I I spend April through June. Watching Stanley Cup playoffs every night, and like a true NBA fan, I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like I'm the one that has to say, "Go Heat, bitch!" for you. Yeah, but, but I don't need to prove my my Miami Heat fandom. Trust me, people know. People know my family. People know. I know how to improve it. All you got to do is put that on your soundboard. Go nice. Heat, bitch. Well, close enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, seriously, no. Uh, streaming is tough. Like, t- like this is the time of year where, like, like with with podcasts, I- I'll tend to slow down a little bit. You know, not get too crazy. I'll, you know, I'll e- even when football starts, I still have the time in between. You know, you know, Sundays to you know watch my stuff. But once October comes, I'm 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 screwed because NBA is back. NBA League Pass is act- activated. The Heat are on, and good luck. Well, first of all. Um, NHL too. Also, you yeah. talk about you talk about watching sports. You know, try covering four sports and in, in, that's. In, I have a newfound respect for fucking for journalists and and, and beat writers. I, this, I, you don't respect me. I'm not a journalist. <laughs> whatever <laughs> you are, Kyle. You think I joke. I don't think I'm a journalist. I really don't. What, what, so what are you then? And I call myself an analyst. That's what I say. Okay. Really, and I think you are too. Also, yeah. Like. Uh, there. So let me break this down for you, right? Yeah. We, we, you already went behind. Yeah. The- are you reporting news or are you analyzing games? It's kind of yes. You know yes that. No. Yeah. So in a way, you are a journalist. Then I well. Uh oh. <laughs> I'll put it this way: like the closest I felt to being a journalist has happened quite recently. Right. Okay. When I was at the Hall of Fame, and I was there. At the NFL, not the Hall of Fame, excuse me, the Super Bowl leading up to um, the week leading up. Still haven't covered the game yet. A journalist would be there. I'm kidding. Um, the when I was backstage of the NFL honors and the Hall of Fame inductees freshly announced were across the stage, and I asked Tony Baselli the first question about being the first Hall of Famer for a franchise and who the next one in there should be as a Jaguar. That was a journalistic moment. I can make an argument that what I did today at Jacksonville Jaguar camp following up on comments were made by a Jacksonville Jaguar or former one of Maurice Jones drew with minority coaching. Um, Digging deeper on that, talking to somebody who's in the, the Bill Walsh fellowship program you guys are uh, a Cowboys fans, so I had to open the, the the interview by saying to him, who grew up a Cowboys fan, that's my quarterback because I played with him and he was in fact my quarterback. I mean, here's like here's the deal: like, name me an analyst that you see in a in a press room after a game asking coaches questions. It's a lot of analysts that don't realize that that's what they are. Okay. And well, but see, I because and and I understand what you're saying because you're 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 analyzing a game to to formulate questions for for coaches. Correct? Is is that that is that the angle you're taking on it? Sure. Like when when so okay. Here's the thing that people don't understand about data and people who say that numbers don't lie. There's a data again. That word data. <laughs> for those who don't know, that is the essential spirit of the student of the game. Like 
it just that that the reason why I've leaned into that persona for damn near 20 years. That so, long? Really? Yes. Wow. I did my first effort as the student of the game in an email to my buddies analyzing <laughs> the Super Bowl matchup between the Bucks and the Raiders. Right. And I think actually the first one, the first one might have been um Patriots and uh Patriots Bucks, and Rams, which was the game leading up to it. Okay. But it was that was the that was that was the first big one that I did it to, with more than one person just because <clears throat> you're really good at that. And I was going to like, all right, you don't know who you're working with. So I did it just to screw around and like, hey, you should do that. Did you see that uh, uh Jim the spur fingers is then? You missed it. I, I missed it. That, that part. <laughs> that. <laughs> he knows for fingers for that. Haven't you ever seen Ray William Johnson? He did the typing in the air when he was typing, you know. Yeah. Usually for the troll. Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm My name's DJ. Like that kind of thing. Anyways, so um, <laughs> Jim liked that. <laughs> no. Um, no, but so what at the next season, like I'm like, those same buddies. I'm like, hey, who's your favorite team again? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And you like you like the Giants, Chris, right? That's it. And I went down the list. And every week, the student of the game was an email newsletter that covered just those teams. And if you didn't make the playoffs, F you. You got out early, you know. And then at some point. talking to you, EJ. Yeah. Fortunately, I didn't know EJ. I would have been burned out and never gotten off the goddamn ground. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Um, remember Jack Nicholson on me? Yeah. Um, no. So, and then eventually at some point, I mean, I don't remember the order of operations specifically, but I do remember a good friend of mine, Ryan saying, Hey, you know, there are these things called podcasts. The fuck is a podcast? Some Ben, some Bill Simmons uh, started. No joking. No, he started making them awful. Anyways, um, <laughs> listen, listen, Jim. You you could think think of the, you can think of me oppressing EJ on that. No, this is not about EJ. Okay, this is about a man who had a show on HBO that NPR, a critic on national public radio, Jim referred to his fucking show as boring, and he still because, because he's right. NPR was right. It was boring. No, stupid, Bill. <laughs> Bill Simmons is still getting paid to do this shit, even though he can produce a show that's so bad NPR calls it boring. Bill Simmons' podcast is not terrible. Stealing money from people who are actually good at it. (sighs) (laughs) You bitch. You call me a bitch. I'm like, what the fuck? (laughs) I mean, he's not wrong. Look, I've cut way back on Bill Simmons stuff, so don't, 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 don't even, you know. Listen, we all make mistakes. Right. You know, at one point I thought Clay Travis was intelligent. I've come around and realized no, no, Clay Travis is a grifter. He's he's, no, actually, you're right. he's not he's not that he's actually, say, actually, not that bad, actually actually Clay no. Travis is a lot smarter than than people think because he yeah. realized how to fucking butter his bread. Right. Big time. I mean, and you know what? I'll take I'll take I will take a Clay Travis nine times out of ten. Over a Skip Bayless any day of the week. Because at least with Clay Travis, he's been capable of smart takes. He has I, enough smart takes to suck you in and then starts going, where is it that he loses me? Typically, it's not his actual sports takes. It's his goddamn politics. And of course, if somebody... Like I said, that's, that's where the bread is buttered. Right. And, you know, and, you know, he, you know he's from a Democratic background. He did Democratic politics. Worked, through, worked yeah. with... Uh, with uh, with um um EJ, Al this, Gore. To, to this day, there's part of me that questions if he's actually a Trump voter, like he claimed to be. He, oh, was he, he wasn't. He wasn't sixteen. He wasn't twenty. Right. He he claimed to be in twenty twenty. But here's the point: with when when with people like him, when you're on the grift, you 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 don't you don't you don't have to be honest. You just have to play to your audience. Right. Which so, I mean. Agree? Here's the thing when you get when you get when you get behind when you get into that booth, there's you and the piece of paper. That's it. You can tell anybody what you want in terms of who you voted for. Right. 
here's, but, the reason, here's the reason why I believe at least most of it. Now, granted, we can't find out about his vote, Jim. That's illegal. But right. the reason why I believe that he he's he's real about at least most of it. Okay. And this is the same reason why, by the way, I don't believe there's mass fixing of games or any of these conspiracy tinfoil hat motherfuckers who think that everything's fixed like it's wrestling and all this other shit. It involves too much complicity. There is too much vis vested in somebody getting short-term dumb, wanting to be bought by a TMZ or whoever the shit it is to maintain any such conspiracy, right? So I'll play that to Clay Travis. He is but a human, and at some point he's going to break. Who saw F Primal Fear with Ed Norton and Richard Gere? Uh, I heard of it, but I never saw it. First of all, step your fucking games up. I'm not going to spoil you see it. When you do see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. And don't worry, I'll give you a freebie back. I haven't seen The Sandlot, so I have my short comments. What? Are you serious? Whoa. What? Both y'all motherfuckers, actually, I just like, I let like I let loose a double decker in your bathroom. Or an upper decker. Sorry. Upper decker. Upper decker is the, right. the, the word, yeah. Wow. Well, sure you're not a baseball well, guy, though. I mean, I mean well, that doesn't matter. It's still, it's still wow. a baseball movie. No, but here's the deal. Like, the pr prime example, a show that I was just talking to my boss about with today, Ted Lasso. Oh, there, the best. there was, what, like, I remember when it when I first heard about it, I'm like, I don't need to watch that. I'm. It's a soccer show. It ain't a soccer show. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's a show with soccer in it. Right. Like, I, I'm not a soccer fan. I, I, I appreciate the athleticism that it takes, um, but it, it's not for me. It is I'll not a game live because that shit's amazing, by the way. I yeah, I, I, I do. Too. There's the, the Philadelphia Union is an I used hour to play, so I used you know, play. I I, I want to go check that out. Um, but but I, I have no desire to sit in front of my TV and wake up at 6 a.m on a Saturday and watch premier league until the sun rises in the, in the East here. The, 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 I have no desire to do that. It's kind of same thing with us with content and too much content enough time for that. Yeah. It, so, it, but that, that was the reason that I was like, man, I don't need to, I don't need to watch this Ted Lasso because I it's, I don't need to watch a soccer show. So, so if you're not a baseball guy, there's to, to a degree, you know, I, I mean, you, we know you've seen major league. I'm, uh, if you've not seen major league, I'm leaving, but, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? like, I'm there, leaving. There, there, there comes a, you know, there comes a point where it's like, okay, I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to watch all of these movies. If baseball's not my sport. Fucking good Jim goes, I'm leaving. You haven't seen major league. <laughs> I mean, uh, EJ, I'd ask you if you've seen Slapshot, but I know you're not a hockey fan, so we don't even need I to think I have, Actually, yeah. I think I have seen it one time. I think I did, I did see it years ago, though. Years I ago. Seen it, My Ducks, too, also. I will see it soon when Demos gets off his duff and we start recording new episodes because I've set up an invitation with our good friend Matt to watch Slapshot. Oh my God! It it's it's one of my it's one of my favorite sports movies. It has that cult following, but I asked my dad about it, and he's like, oh, "I don't get it." I'm like, "Oh, mm. you know, it's Let's like <clears throat> my 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 dad and my uncle were were big into the the booster club of the the Hershey Bears, which is the the AHL team thirty minutes huh? away from me. Right. Um, and and they were actually there was a guy who played for the Bears that's in the movie Slapshot. Um. And and my my dad says that watching Slapshot is is a truly authentic look at minor league hockey in the in the nineteen seventies. Like it, it it truly like that's that's how that's how it was. So um, it's goon with less of the like gross shit. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of. But you know, it's a, it's a, it's a period piece. All right, let's close to this one last topic. Um, just give me one storyline you're looking forward to uh, to dissecting this coming season. The NFL season, and, yeah. Any any random storyline that you like? Because uh, there's so many right now. But which, which is one that you you have to say that? Huh? <laughs> which team will EJ pick this season? Oh, geez. <laughs> give, give me a couple weeks. I'll I'll figure it out. <laughs> no, no, Jim. Oh, go ahead, Kyle. Go ahead, Kyle. Go ahead. Yeah, listen. Pardon my bias here, but. 
I think a lot of the stuff, a lot of where the teams are going to fall and who's going to win what, honestly, I don't see a lot of divergence, right? Um, you know, so far, I've gone basically chalk with my guests on who's going to be a winner in their division or can p- compete for playoffs. And really, the only thing that might be surprising is what I talk about with the Vikings, but that's more about the schedule being weak for them than anything else. Granted, we're only three divisions in, and once we finish the AFC East, we'll be halfway done, right? That'll be this cu- upcoming Tuesday. Uh, bing! Student the Game Podcast. But, and, and, and there's a certain bias here, too, because I'm in it, but I really want to see what effect Urban Meyer's regime had on the development of one Trevor Lawrence. Because, listen, Jim can say what he wants about coming in as a mercenary and winning that one game against Clemson while he had COVID and then getting smashed afterward and being shown the truth. <laughs> the ACC, because once Trevor Lawrence left, what the fuck have they done lately? Like, their best quarterback now, who was drafted in the first round, and, and granted, it's not him being drafted there that's the issue, okay? Kenny Pickett. I'm not saying you're here to say he's a cord- bad quarterback, but when your conference, the best thing you have to offer is the quarterback of a team that in 2018 printed T-shirts for beating a G5 team that's allegedly inferior, inferior to even be on their schedule. Yes, I'm referencing them ending UCF's winning streak. That's the best you got coming out of that conference that's allegedly supposed to be so good. Oh, by the way, it's not. It's worse than the American it's worse than the Big 12. It's worse than the B- Big 10 and SEC, surely. So, knowing that Trevor Lawrence was that good, that his departure started the decline, marked of the ACC, well, made it obvious. I had been spotting it for a while, and the Clemson was the exception, right? <laughs> what should have happened? Now, granted, I've written articles while I was blue in the face last year about comparing him to Peyton Manning and what he is still being better than Peyton Manning in passing numbers while being able to also run with Trevor Lawrence. And and seeing him in camp in person today, yeah, I know it was in shorts, but listen, you can't take away his accuracy. But I want to see how everything falls into place with somebody other than Urban Meyer. And listen, your Eagles... Uh, EJ won a super. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. who? <laughs> I just slow, want to slow, 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 uh, slow your ass down. Slow your ass down. I, I just, I really, I really, honestly, just wanted you to respond, and you nailed it. You landed uh, miles in an Olympics, bro. It was great. Um, you can't call me racist now. No, um, I'm getting there. <laughs> so I said Eagles. They booed Santa Claus. That's fair. Anyway, oh. And I'll tell you a story from the vacation. That'll wrap me up here. But okay, um, seeing what Trevor Lawrence can do with a Super Bowl winning head coach that ha- was asked to write a book about do- write, uh, 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 running an offense is something I'm interested in seeing. Now, so I was on vacation this past week, right? The one was so quiet. Um, yeah, I was actually taking time off. Lo and be fucking hold. Anyways, I'll, I'll do it again. <laughs> was that <scary? laughs> don't worry it's gonna be a while bitch i, <laughs> I, need, I dude i need vacation so bad it, it's, it's terrifying but um so i got a, 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 the only thing wrong with the condo we were staying at in, in that building was that during peak times for checkout and dinner or or any of that the elevators would be difficult and you'd be in some crowded situations right so for whatever reason, I was by myself getting on the elevator and like I had it was me and literally this other family. And I mean, everybody from the kid in the damn stroller up to grandma was in this bitch. It was crazy. I might as well have been staring at a family photo instead of the mirror that was there. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I do the customary thing. I focus on the little kid. I wave hi to him to show I'm friendly and and then thus to show to everybody monster else. Daddy, I, that's a monster. <laughs> Seven five. Ooh, got zebra. No. Um, <laughs> but and for the record, everybody, I'm just six five. Settle the fuck down. But even though no, we'll, we'll go with seven five, my, 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 I'm 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 right. Even yeah. though our good friend GWSTWLIO is pretty sure that I'm until 10 I meet you in person, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume you're seven foot five. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> to disappoint you. Um, 
no more than Andrew Bynum did to the Philadelphia area. Moving on. So oh. too soon? What? Shut up. <laughs> I'm okay. I hate Philly. Come on. Up, Heat fan. They're the I ones that gave you Jimmy Butler. Um, no. Yeah. I had some basketball talk for that ass. I love Anyways. it. I love um, it. Go Heat, bitch. No. That's right. So I get on there, and, and I'm there for a bit, and I establish the friendliness by waving to the little kid, and I hear, like, the tweener daughter from my left, because I'm not looking at her. You, you don't make eye contact when you're this big and this age with younger kids in general, let, uh, moreover, females. It's just not going to end well. Um, I know I haven't learned that from experience. That's just survival instinct. Moving on. <laughs> so... He looks like Uncle Ryan. I'm like, that's random. So I'm let it slide. Kids just talking to the family. I'm not offended. I have plenty of friends named Ryan. Whatever. I just did a movie draft with one of them who I just met, even though he hates crinkle fries. What the fuck? No. Look, Ryan has issues, and we'll deal with that down the road. Trust uh, me. Yeah, I'm trying. Um, but and but where it got weird was somebody can. Oh yeah, yeah. He looks like Ryan. Like, listen, bitches. No, I was like, so I say. You can call me that if you want. Ba -da -ba -ba. Anyways, so I hope somebody got that reference, but it won't be you two, and I don't blame you. No. So um, I say that, and so somebody thinking they're sharp, sharp it says to me, oh, well, you have to learn to speak in a Philadelphia accent. Listen, motherfuckers. <laughs> On hilarity by default, I've trained a lot of accents. I'm aware there's a Philadelphia accent. I've only seen two movies attempt it. And that's Invincible and Silver Linings Playbook. Um, I haven't mastered that. There's a lot of things I can do. Watch Hilarity by default. I'll break out into stuff because Demos basically challenges me, or at least that's what I interpret. So I say, I haven't worked on that one, but here, let me think about it. So I try to get, okay, how can I get Philly as quickly as possible? Um, Yay, cheesesteaks. Boo, Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that's the story. Yay, cheesesteaks. Boo, Santa Claus. They seem to appreciate it, too, so whatever. Jim, what uh, storyline are you looking forward to most this year? Um, I mean, I'll, I'll put it this way. Outside of outside of my own team. um, The Capitals. <laughs> that's a football team? Um, the, 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 the Commodore? <laughs> They're, uh, they're story <laughs> like the Cowboys, Out, <laughs> right? Do you have uh, Rob Snyder from um, Waterboy? Because that would be the Cowboys storyline. Oh no, we suck again. No, no, I, I, I do not. I should probably have that one because um, <laughs> it's it's inevitable at some point. Um, I, I'm curious to see, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking from the AFC um, has. Have have the have the Chiefs under Andy Reid peaked? That's a good one. Um, you know, because why, why don't you ask me? <laughs> well, because I want to ask a real Chiefs fan. Um, he, you he said was last. You said was last year though. Uh, I mean, you're you're. I would I wouldn't call you a Chiefs fan. You're a you're a um a, a victim of the moment. He's he's not a Chiefs fan. He's just an Arrowhead. You, <laughs> oh no, no, <laughs> you, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you, uh, Kyle. you just overinflated them. But, oh but, you know, man, and, that's that's tough. Happen. Um, what no, but, but, but uh, you know, we, you know, Kelsey's not getting any younger. You know, you've now lost your 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 quickest weapon on offense. Your, um, you know. It, and Andy Reid is not certainly not getting any younger. You know that there's been there's been talk for a few years now. You know is is uh, the enemy the successor there? And and you got to think he is. If you know if right. you're going to continue to hang on and not take jobs that everybody wants to put you in without ever asking the guy. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you know it, there's there's a there's a belief. And again, nobody's ever asked the guy either, but there's a belief that that he's, you know, the head coach in waiting. So so my 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 curiosity is as as the rest of the conference continues to get better, um, have the Chiefs gotten better, stayed the same? And if you're staying the same when when 
everybody else is getting better, you're getting worse, or have they actually gotten worse? So, um, you know, I think that's definitely one to watch because, you know, they, 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 they've been at the top, but you know, they, they, they've now, they've now been dethroned, um, or they were dethroned last year by, by the Bengals. And now you know, we got to find out what's, what's real and what isn't. So I'm curious to see, um, you know, how, how real are they still? I mean, you can cheat and just say that that's based entirely off the NFC, AFC West, right? Like, sure. that's entirely the premise, in my opinion, that you just put up. Like, the Chiefs have completely changed their structure. The Raiders are suddenly playing great for no good reason. Apparently, John Gruden being an alleged racist has made De uh, Derek Carr relevant again. That's <laughs> interesting. And, well, and now, well, they've well, added, man. now they've added the best you wide one of the best wide receivers in the game interesting yeah fair point as well and then you know the the, the chargers have you know uh, the quarterback who's been anointed as a hall of famer without really doing anything achievement wise and you know the 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 broncos have hired a guy i don't oh, know the denver broncos perfect <laughs> broncos have hired a guy in food services that everybody's all excited about i don't understand <laughs> yeah you know, so I mean, even yeah, with even in their own division, but I mean, the conference itself too has gotten has gotten better. The conference. Oh, looking forward to talking to Ben Albright, Ben Albright about the Broncos on the Student of the Game podcast later in August. Thank you, Ernest Christian, for helping set that up. You're welcome. <laughs> um, mine, you know, mine's more so not so much a storyline or whatever, but it's more so that I'm rooting for someone, Lamar Jackson. I, I just want him right. to prove everybody wrong this year. There's so many fucking doubt. You see that the defensive coordinator that unnamed DC said it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if he wins 12 MVPs, he is still not a quarterback. What the fuck does that even mean? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of the the running quarterback isn't a quarterback thing. Well, I've never heard anybody say that about Cam Newton. Uh, yeah, I mean, because yeah, Cam it, was, it was a more a more of a balance of Cam than, than even Lamar. Right. Which I get, but I which I get, but you know, but Cam, like L. Jack, is because I'm so I can't just call him Lamar. I I don't I don't feel like I've earned that right. Like the dude's more exalted than that, in my opinion. Granted, he stole an MVP from from Russell Carrington Wilson. And I'm aware of that, but but I can't just call him Lamar. I feel like he earns. I did not earn that right to, to call him by his government name so openly and freely like that. So L Jack is what I stick with. But like no wrong with that. He and and Cam for the number of years they've been in the league together, nobody has higher running and passing numbers combined. You can't achieve that without being a quarterback because a running back doesn't throw the god dang ball. And if we're going, if you're somebody who's, if you're somebody who's always been critical of Cam Newton's stroke, okay, fine, I won't bug you too much. But if you let Cam slide, and are then criticizing L. Jack for, with by the way, <clears throat> allegedly suffering the same problem, that's an interesting premise. I might have to get into this on the student of the game. Cam and L. Jack have similar issues. Like, name me the best receiver not named Steve Smith, that Cam played with. Kelvin Benjamin? I don't know. Right? Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't for Greg Olson, his targets would be relatively light. I mean, Musi Muhammad, did he play with Cam? I don't think so. I think for like a year, Maybe for a year. No, no, no. I think he might have been gone when Cam got there. Yeah. Maybe a year. Maybe a year at most. A year, right. You know, and, and and granted, the only thing stopping Steve Smith from having consecutive thousand yard seasons in the double digits, rivaling like a Chris Carter, um, slash Jerry Rice type of guy or a Jimmy Smith type of guy, um, Steve Smith and Jimmy Smith, by the way, both fantastic and underappreciated receivers. The only reason Steve Smith didn't achieve that wasn't a drug suspension like with Jimmy Smith, but rather somebody who put that team in quite the pickle at the quarterback position, right, Jim? Oh, Jimmy Clausen. Don't remind me of that motherfucker. 
Oh, you mean Jimmy? <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't my boy. I don't boy. claim him. So, no, I, I, I'll put it this way. I don't know if you've heard. No, you said you did hear the AFC North show. So I had Ashley Baker on. And let me tell you. I'm actually almost done with him. I'm in the middle of the, uh, the Drax interview. So. Okay. So I won't. I won't. Spoil it, but Ashley has some choice things to say because I do bring up Lamar because we talk Ravens. I heard, I heard it was really, that one. Okay, that was, uh, that was a good one. So, all, all right, good EJ. I'm the student of the game. That's right, Rick James. Bitch. And he's back. He's back podcasting. I never that's- really left. See, that's what the that's what the lie is, dude. You left. Stop. You weren't doing your that's own show. For six like years. I'm Mr. I was still doing. So- I'm kidding. You know what I mean. Oh, damn. Right, you, 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 went, you went there. Far. Kyle, plug away. Oh, I'm Kyle Nash, Student Game Report. Follow me on Twitter at YesOTG. Follow me on Facebook, Student Game. Find me. <laughs> what was that? Keep going. Instagram. This is Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. Demosthenes Euclid. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. You know, you started strong and you finished poorly. I'm tired You're more of a Philly fan than you think. No, he started strong. He finished poorly. That's why he has. Ew, Jim. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Kyle. No, uh, see, he's going to hear the podcast later when he's re-listening. Be like, he said, what about my kids? No, but um, <laughs> anyways, of course, listen, honor, joy, and privilege, despite this train wreck of a podcast as it was, all in good fun. I am Kyle Nash, the student of the game. You can find me on Twitter at the SOTG. Find me on Instagram as the same, the SOTG. Find me on Facebook as the student of the game. Also, check out my work with the threepointconversion.com. My man, Raphael Hayes, came on this past week to talk the NFC North. I Can't saw that. Yeah, how much fun he had. I'm down. Uh, but also, I'll be there. I was at Jags camp today on Wednesday, if you're listening to this fresh and so clean, clean. Or yesterday, if you listen to it the next day, because it's already damn near midnight. Uh, it's true. Uh, so I'm about to have, have an, a, an article drop there coming from that. Also... Check it out. I'm going to the Hall of Fame with with the three point conversion next week. Next Friday is my flight leaves to cover the induction on Saturday. So that should be fun. Um, also, check out my work with the black and gold banneret. And as football season approaches, look out for previews for the UCF Knights. That should be a fun time all the way around and see what sort of conference realignment stuff is going to come there, too, and all that other stuff. But hey, there's still one more year in the American Athletic Conference, which is still currently better than the ACC. And then, of course, everybody is. Come on. And not the Pac 12. And then, of course, uh, check out my work with Hilarity by Default, Demosthenes. <laughs> Demosthenes. With Demosthenes Euclid. Check out that work on Hilarity by Default, the required viewing show where we check out classic movies and see if they are actually still required viewing. And, of course, my work with A7BN Sports and the Captain Company Morning Show on OldSchool101.com. Had a little fun there, too. They were part of the Jacksonville Jaguars coverage. Talked to first-round overall pick Trayvon Walker at camp today. That was fun, too. So, until next time, everybody, honor, joy, and privilege, class dismissed. Big Jim. All right, 3 Count Thursday, uh, 3CT. Uh, 3 Thursday.com. you'll find everything there. Uh, merchandise, subscribe to us, all podcast platforms, YouTube, uh, as well. Um, are you getting, when are you getting this uploaded right away? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so join us, uh, tonight, which will be the 28th. Uh, we have independent, uh, wrestler bro Keller on with us. Um, excited to see him. He's, he's a local guy here in central PA. Um, so, uh, really excited to talk to him preview SummerSlam, obviously this uh this upcoming weekend so that's going to be a fun one um S- summer fest i mean yeah the, yeah the summer fest um but you can uh you, you know, check us out there uh huddle up podcast we have uh one of our final uh off-season episodes dropping next week uh and we will be back live on is it the 23rd i forget the date i think it's the 23rd speaking um, of which speaking of which August, uh, Jim, yes are we doing I was waiting for the one that we we recorded for. I was waiting for the one for this week. It didn't drop yet. Is the next week dropping it? They come every other week. We oh, okay. That's why. We're, that's we're, how we're out. Okay. Yeah. We're, okay. 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 To the to the end of the off season. Uh, but August the twenty third, we return live 
uh, for our weekly shows. Uh, and we will start off with the college football preview. Uh, then we'll get to the NFL preview the following week. And uh, and then we are back in there on that. So uh, Facebook.com slash Huddle Up Podcast, Twitter at Huddle Up Podcast. And um, subscribe again, all podcast platforms, both 3CT and Huddle Up have the, uh, have the link trees on all of our social media. So that's where, you know, if you need to catch any of the links um, relating to us, you can get them there. Uh, discussions with a nobody have some ideas uh i just need to uh get some get some people scheduled uh we we've had some uh we've had things planned and then uh covid which is yes still a, a thing has derailed a few of those so we we will get it uh we'll get them scheduled and then get those out there as well. I, I told you five months <laughs> you know, motherfucker it's been what a month <laughs> it hasn't even been a month yet so the last time- discussions the last one I put out was on July the fifth. Close enough. <laughs> I mean, it still ain't a month, motherfucker. <laughs> but hey, why let facts get in the way? This is just your show. Facts are feelings. <laughs> That's right. We don't, we don't do facts here. Yeah. Kyle, you are aware of Vincent Man, right? What's going on with him, right? I'm aware of her. What? Of, of Vincent Man, right? Yes, that he's no longer the commission, right? Or the director. CEO. He's no longer. He's gone. He's retired. He's out of here. So, so, this, so summer sounds be interesting this weekend because the first uh, this is the first uh, big event post Vince in forty years. Just so long as Stephanie McMahon doesn't talk, I'm good. What's wrong with Stephanie McMahon? I just there's something about her presentation. She just makes my skin crawl. Mm. Oh, well, I'm a fan. <laughs> me too. <laughs> she starts me talking. Too. Anyway. Great pot of nights. That 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 imp- me having that impulse has saved my life many times. We can file that for content. Yeah. <laughs> next next one. <laughs> Good job, guys. <laughs>